everyone, this is John. I am in LA at uh, Griffith Park. Um, this weekend I rented a uh, Hasselblad 500CM. Uh, this place near me was renting them for $30 for the weekend, so I thought, eh, what the heck, I'll give it a shot. Um, I rented it once before, same reason, just it was cheap and available, so and so was I. But it turns out I had a busy weekend and never really got to use it. And um, so I was like, wow, I wasted all that. So anyway, so I thought, okay, this weekend I've got some time. Let's, let's, uh, let's go for it. Um, so I took the YouTube and Instagram asking people for suggestions. I got one. Someone said Griffith Park. So I was curious what I could find there. Um, we're here. Um, I don't come here very often. Um, a lot of cool trees, you know, it's a park. A lot of trails. Um, I found this uh, merry-go-round that looks really cool. Um, and weather for this morning called, like it called for fog. So I thought it'd be cool to see what it looks like with the fog. Maybe kind of mystical kind of thing. And as I got here, the fog's gone. And I don't, you know, I was kind of dreaming in my head. Maybe the uh, the horses and everything that in the merry-go-round would be visible, but it's closed. And there's doors covering everything. So um, I just framed up uh, with some trees to show it's closed. I don't know, I just thought, I'm here, might as well go for it. Um, so I'm set up with the Hasselblad. It's a square format camera, medium format. Um, the lens on here, it's a 150 millimeter. Um, I've got two lenses, but one film back. Um, there's an 80 millimeter I'll use in a little bit and then one film back. And the film I'm using is Portra 160 from Kodak. Um, I also have some Cinestill film that I'll try later. Um, it's funny because I wanted to use both, but I only have one film back, so I have to kind of stick with what I've got for now. Um, I'm not really used to this camera, so it's been my first time using it for real. I got a uh, cable release that I'll install real quick before I get too carried away. So this camera is all mechanical. Um, there's no light meter, electronics whatsoever. Um, every, all the settings are manual. Um, in previous videos, I've shown me working with a uh, Mamiya RB67, but I sold that a while ago, just during COVID, everything was shut down, including the place I would get film developed, all that kind of stuff. So I found it just sitting there and from the weight of the camera it was it got to the point where I was like you know I I don't feel like carrying that camera around I love the quality I love everything about it except it just it, you know it's a boat anchor and so I thought you know might as well with everything shut down I saw they were actually going for more than what I bought it for so I, I sold it and um, I, I have some regrets because now things are opening up uh, the film place I get uh, film developed you know it's open and they're getting faster with developing and all that so I regret selling it now so that's why I was like kind of curious uh, what's available to rent or uh, to buy and so I saw this I thought I'd give it a shot I always wanted to use a Hasselblad when I was in film school uh, film when I had a film class um, Hasselblad's at the point were you know like the Mercedes and I was driving or using a Honda Canon but funny how that works anyway um, so I'm more of a Canon guy um, but Canon doesn't make medium format anyway so um, I remember a while back seeing this maybe 10 years ago now seeing uh, at a camera sh local camera shop about they had 10 bodies like a bunch of body Hasselblad bodies a bunch of lenses they were all super cheap like Probably could have gotten a full setup for 800 bucks. Now it's up where 1,500, 2,000 dollars. So you snooze, you lose. Anyway, back to this photo. So I'm set up with 150 millimeter. I have this loop uh, for focusing. It's a little difficult to use because um, you're seeing things in reverse. So when you want to go right, you're actually going left. And oh yeah. So as I was saying about being all mechanical, there's no light meter. I have this app that I have, it's a light meter app that you can set everything 
it acts like a spot meter. So I'm giving that a shot. Seems pretty spot on. I compared it with um, my Canon lens that I'm shooting on right now or filming with. So basically I'm set up, pull the dark slide. I'm at F5.6, the, uh, the film speed is set because it's 160, um, shutter speed's at whatever 4 means, a quarter of a second, I'm not sure, so here we go, and there it is. So, rookie mistake number one, I'm winding the film and I thought it would automatically stop at the next frame. It doesn't, so I kept winding and it went from one shot number one to shot number eight. So, damn. So, while I'm still being a rookie so I'm just learning um, when I take a shot and wind to the next I recock the lens when this winds it automatically winds the film to the next frame and so I went from one shot to shot number 12 altogether <sighs> You live and learn. All right, let's go have some fun. So for this next shot, I take to the main streets of Vermont Canyon. It's actually a really nice area of LA on the other side of Griffith Park. Uh, I think just up the hill right here is Griffith Observatory. I can't observe it right now. I've been thinking about that one all morning. Anyway, um, I've been working on this uh, personal project of trees, uh, photographing trees around LA. And there's this tree right here. I don't know what kind of tree it is. And this one right now is kind of like spotlit uh, with the fog and um, I don't know if spotlight's the word but it it really stands out so with this shot um, I want to isolate the the tree more than anything it's already isolates itself just by how it stands out and there's some slight haze in the air but I want to isolate try to isolate it even more so I'm still on the one 150 lens and this one goes to f4 yeah the numbers all go to 11 look so I'm keeping in mind that um, at the last location, one shot took 12 frames because I was uh, I'm still learning on the widening of the film. So, so since that film ran out, I only had two shots on the whole roll, and I'm not entirely sure how they're going to turn out. Um, I switched to Cinestill. Uh, it's Cinestill 50D. Uh, it's daylight balanced. I'm not how sure. I'm not sure how it works with clouds, but uh, should be should be fine um, so the ISO on this is 50 much slower so um, I want to test the accuracy of this uh, app or this light the light meter app that I'm using and again this lens can only go to f4 I'm keeping it there uh, so I'm supposedly spot metering it's telling me to go to, to 8 uh, and so I I'm set to 8 shutter speed 8 whatever that means because uh, after you get from a 30th of a second, 15th of a second, an 8th of a second, and then we take our shot. What do you think? Uh, I'm making 
sure it only winds this sucker. All right, on to shot number two. And I feel stupid. I stopped at McDonald's real quick and across the street or just down the street a little bit I saw this abandoned uh, um, motel and I thought you know medium format camera abandoned building you know you have to do that so um, I'm set up across the street uh, still the 150 lens I promise I'll get the 80 millimeter out at some point um, I wish I was over just one foot but there's a van parked right in front of me so I can't really get around that um, maybe I could shoot through the window. It might be kind of interesting, but the windows are up. Anyway, so I'm parked, I'm planted across the street. Uh, I set the aperture to f11. My meter for the dark spot, it's saying a 60th of a second. So if I meter for the lighter spot, it's saying the same thing. This uh, spot meter is not entirely accurate. Yeah, I think I'm in focus. So F11, 60th of a second, and let's see. to downtown um, I stopped to get more film um, I've got three shots left on this first roll of Cinestill uh, looking for things to photograph uh, it's funny I'm shooting it with ISO 50 so and I'm also going to be shooting handheld so I'm looking for brighter subjects um, there's this cool sandwich shop um, I think I might come back tonight because I also have a roll of Cinestill 800 uh, that's uh, supposedly tungsten balanced so uh, supposedly it's like cool hipster photography film so I'll give that a shot so for now I'm just gonna shoot walk around look for things to photograph and um, also gonna be taking notes for where to come back tonight um, I've got uh, an appointment beforehand so it'll be later but there's a lot of cool signs that come out at night so check it out So I'm back in LA. Um, if you think it's nighttime, you might be correct, but it's actually morning. Uh, I think it's about five now. Um, my intention was to come back during the night um, last night, but I went to a Christmas party and got a little tired, so I thought um, I should get some sleep instead. Um, so I switched to a film called Cinestill uh, 800T. It's a tungsten balanced uh, film. For tungsten light 
I've never actually shot with that before. Um, back when I was learning how to shoot with film originally, um, I remember photographing some things in fluorescent lighting and I thought, and the colors would come out really weird and it always bugged me like, what's going on? And that's when I learned film generally is balanced for daylight. So the colors look more natural in daylight. So you'd get special filters to compensate for that. Um, so that's cool, this film is actually tungsten, so it gives you more ability to photograph in tungsten light. Um, I thought, I just think it's interesting. This film's actually kind of expensive for what it is. It was $15 for the roll. Um, it's cine still, so from what I understand, it's just a repackaged Kodak film that's used in for movies. I'm not sure exactly what, but... Um, I've been reading it's like popular with hipsters. I don't know if hipsters are the word. I don't want to make fun of anybody, but um, it's popular popular amongst people who are learning or film enthusiasts now, photographing with film. And one of the popular cliches is photographing gas stations because it looks cool with this film. So uh, I'm not one to buck too many trends, but. I was like, well, if everybody's shooting gas stations, I don't really want to, but the contrarian in me is uh, fighting it. But I found this cool old gas station that's actually converted to uh, a coffee shop. Um, it's closed, but the lights are on, so it looks cool. So I'm just set up across the street and um, making sure I'm in focus. All right. So for the exposure, I actually just cheated. I used my digital camera that I'm filming on right now and set it to 800 ISO, tongue stain, the whole thing, just to see what I'm doing. Because I have my light meter. Actually, I should compare it. I didn't really compare it. I'm being lazy. It's 8 in the morning. Or it's 8 in the morning. It's 5 in the morning, folks. Let's see, 800 ISO. I'm at aperture 5.6. It's accurate. So, giving it a shot. It's telling me at 2. I don't know what 2 means. Because um, on my digital, I'm so used to the shutter speeds on there. It goes from 4 to a half a second, a quarter second. and then So, I'm assuming 2 means a quarter second. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, I just play one on TV. So here's a shot. I'm gonna try one more, because um, last night when I was uh, at the Christmas party enjoying myself, I found that this camera has a mirror lockup. So I'm giving that a shot real quick. Less vibration. So there's that. So I made it back downtown. Um, I was just cruising around looking for signs that are lit up that look cool. And I remember there's this uh, old building that's probably like 100 years old or somewhere in there. Uh, it's the Bendix building. Um, it's got this radio tower up top um, that's normally lit up that looks really cool. But uh, I guess they shut it off in the middle of the night. Go figure. Um, but the only thing still lit is a light a light that flashes at the top I guess for airplanes so I'm kind of aiming for that I'm still set up with the 80 millimeter um, trying to figure out what to incorporate because um, there's a city parts down below the buildings looks cool and there's a street light that's somewhat distracting but I actually kind of like it I don't know it just adds a little ambiance so I'm timing the um, the beacon at the top, um, it flashes every five seconds, so I'm not sure when to do the photo, so I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. Let's go to wind the film. Okay, one more time. One, two, three, 
four, five. Alright, so I moved over a few blocks and the sun's starting to come up, but there's still some fog that's been lingering for this uh, last few weeks. Um, it's kind of rare that at least that I've noticed. Um, usually it's foggy for a couple days and then it's clear for, you know, weeks. So it's kind of nice because it, it lingers and creates some nice ambiance. So um, I'm set up where there's this uh, V intersection. Uh, this looks really cool. The billboards are kind of funky for me, but um, yeah, it's LA. Um, anyway, so I just liked how it looks like this point in the, with the fog and the mist or the haze. It just looks really cool. So I'm set up um, with this tungsten film. I thought it would be kind of cool because it gives this like kind of ghostly sort of feel because uh, normally with daylight balanced, you know, it looks a little more natural. But um, here with the tungsten, I think it's going to look a little more, look colder. So give that a shot. So I'm set up at uh, aperture 5.6, uh, 15th of a shutter speed, and there. rats starting to run out of holes so it's probably time to go um, I've really had fun using this camera and the film as well um, I'm still waiting to see what it looks like but this camera has been really simple to use um, the lens is jammed once and it was simple to fix um, the films uh, easy to load uh, the camera itself is pretty light I don't feel like it's an anchor you need you know an extra person to carry it for you um, so I'd actually see myself saving up to get this camera. It's not cheap to buy. Uh, I think this setup right here is probably $2,000 somewhere in there on eBay on an average price. So it's not cheap, but you know, it's one, one of those things, uh, I like to keep in mind, uh, to look for. Um, also I have one more roll of Cinestill, but it's uh, black and white film and it's a variable variable film speed. I'm not really sure what that means. Um, I don't have time to try it today. So maybe a future video and I can rent this, this guy again. It's only $30 for the weekend, so it's a real bargain. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, feel free to subscribe, no pressure. Uh, I'll see you next time, bye.